In this video, we will be covering the concept of lateral torsional buckling. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the deformed shape of a beam undergoing lateral torsional buckling, explain the physical causes of lateral torsional buckling, identify which geometric section parameters affect lateral torsional buckling, and compare the lateral torsional buckling behavior between different cross sections. Here are two different cross sections. They are both made from two structural tracks attached together. However, the one on the left is attached back to back. The one on the right is attached to the legs by overlapping them a bit. This does not create a perfect rectangle, but should be fine for the purposes of our demonstration. Based on what you already know, which cross section would you predict to undergo lateral torsional buckling first? Do not worry if you do not know the answer right now. Let us first look at what causes lateral torsion buckling so we can answer this question. As you likely already know, when a member such as the one shown is subjected to a compressive force, it wants to bow outward once it reaches a critical force. The deflected shape can be seen with the dotted lines. On the right is Euler's buckling equation. There are two geometric parameters affecting the force required to buckle this column. The unbraced length of the column and the moment of inertia around its weak axis. Keep that in mind as we further discuss lateral torsional buckling. What if only part of the cross section is in compression? When a beam is subjected to positive flexure as shown in this picture, the top half of the beam is in compression as indicated by the red shaded area. The lower half of the beam is in tension indicated by the green shaded area. The portion in compression wants to buckle like we'd expect, but it is restrained by the portion in tension. However, it can still buckle in the lateral direction. So this is what the area under compression will try to do. While the failure mechanism occurs, the section undergoes two motions. It translates laterally and it rotates. For a W section, it rotates towards the weak axis of bending. As a rule of thumb, a section will be more susceptible to lateral torsional buckling if there is a large difference between the moment of inertia in the strong axis versus its weak axis. However, this is not always the case. Seen here is the equation for the moment capacity limited by elastic torsional buckling. This can be found in Chapter F of the AISC specifications. This equation is part of a user note, however it provides an identical solution to the equations F2-3 and F2-4. Take a moment to look over this equation. Can you identify some parameters that affect the moment capacity based on this equation? Similar to Euler's buckling, the unbraced length and the moment of inertia about the y-axis are two geometric properties that affect lateral torsional buckling. There are two other geometric parameters that you may not have heard of. The first is the CW term. This can be calculated based on the moment of inertia and the distance between the centroids of the flanges. This value is related to the section's resistance to warping torsion. The other parameter is the torsional constant, J. This value is tabulated for you in the front of the AISC manual. There are two material properties associated with lateral torsional buckling. The first is the Young's modulus, or the modulus elasticity. The second is the shear modulus elasticity. Lastly, there is a parameter associated with loading on the beam. This is the moment distribution factor denoted as C subscript B in this equation. This factor depends on how the moment is distributed along the beam, also known as the moment gradient. A constant moment along the beam results in a factor of 1. Now that we have explained the causes of lateral torsion buckling, can you answer the original question? Which section do you think will buckle first? The I-beam section on the left buckles first, since it is less resistant to both pure torsion and warping torsion. This is due to a much lower torsional constant and warping torsion, or CW, term. The shear stress flows around the rectangular section. However, our intuition says that the I-beam would buckle first because of a bigger difference in the moment of inertia is about each axis. Notice how they have roughly the same moment of inertia about the x-axis, but the rectangular section has a greater y-axis value. In conclusion, we have described the deformed shape of a beam undergoing lateral torsion buckling. We have explained the physical causes of lateral torsion buckling, we have identified which parameters affect lateral torsion buckling, and we have compared the behavior of different cross sections.